G'day guys and gal, there is a shocking amount of visceral melee combat in Warhammer 40k. It's not like Dune where there is a valid in-law reason for people only using melee weapons, it's literally just the rule of cool, since there are rail guns that could atomize you from a continent away, as well as thousands of other different types of guns that should be way more lethal than a glorified chainsaw. With so much melee carnage, sometimes we forget about what is going on in the void of space, epic battles as starships rip each other to shreds with torpedoes, lance fire, boarding actions, and some good old fashioned ramming. Some things don't change. The biggest decider in in those void battles is who has the biggest schlong, the biggest battleship, with the Imperium having multiple classes of warship to choose from. Before we get started, my years of studying Warhammer 40k has led to one conclusion. The best way to safeguard your soul from the predations of chaos is by having an easy to follow, affordable and effective skincare routine. Thankfully, Geology has partnered with me today like a glorious heretic purging inquisitor to save your skin and soul in equal measure. Jokes aside, in life you gotta take the easy wins when they present themselves. Skincare is an easy win that makes a huge difference. You ever wonder why some people turn 30 then look like absolute ass, yet some people are absolutely golden? A huge part of that is skincare, but why geology above the others? Well, it knows we aren't skincare gurus, so it simply asks us to fill out an online survey, then BAM! A custom skincare routine suited to your needs is sent to your door. I used to struggle with oily skin and dark circles under my eyes, but both of those have noticeably reduced since using Geology. Geology also offers numerous other hygiene products, things that us Warhammer nerds should probably appreciate a bit more. Stuff like body washes, deodorants, and many, many more. So to get 70% off your first skincare package, as well as 50% off an additional Geology product, then use my link below. That is the biggest discount for a physical product that I've ever offered on this channel. Cheers to Geology for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over each class of Imperial Warship, discussing their size, power, special features, and some famous examples of them. I bet you don't know what the class of the Emperor's personal ship was. Now let's get into it. An interesting thing about the warships in 40k is that because technology has generally regressed, the ships made 10,000 years ago during the Great Crusade are often the best the Imperium has, as they have now lost the ability to make a lot of their classes of ships. Further along that theme, ships predating the Great Crusade, ones that were made during the Dark Age of Technology, are leagues better than the current modern day ones, highlighting just how far mankind has fallen. At the bottom of the pecking order for warships, we have the Starfighters, attack craft, interceptors, or whatever you want to call them. Small, agile ships that are launched from their big mummers in swarms, designed to intercept torpedoes, boarding pods, or other fighters. They are often flown by one or two pilots, with many of them not even having a crew beyond that. They are more like mosquitoes compared to the leviathans of true battleships, but in great enough number, they can be a huge pain in the ass. There are also specialized versions of each fighter, including bombers, which can fuck up bigger ships with their chunks payloads, as well as troop transports. But because there are so many different types of fighters, and no one really wants to waste their time learning about the smallest ship on this list, let's just move on. The smallest warp capable craft gives us the Viper class Stoop, the ultimate scout ship. This ship's only purpose is to fly towards an enemy fleet, let out a massive scan, and then run away. They have barely any weapons or shields, as both of these would help give away their position. As such, a Viper class will pretty much always travel ahead of a fleet, and then upon account Entering hostiles, will leg it to the nearby warp point and run the fuck away. This technically isn't a warship per se, but as it's used entirely for war reasons, I thought I'd chuck her in. Now we have the first category of warships, the escort ships. The first class I want to talk about are the Cobra class destroyers, a one kilometer long, incredibly agile ship. These bad boys pack a punch. I love it how the smallest warship is one kilometer long. They are designed to be able to fly close to enemy capital ships, unleash a bunch of torpedoes, and then get out of there before they can be targeted by broadsides. They're also one of the easiest ships to build, so it's not uncommon for Imperial fleets to basically just spam these guys since they make great escorts and can take out ships far larger than themselves. Their speed also makes them great for catching pirates. Overall, a small but deadly battleship. If ships could have short man syndrome and the desire to overachieve, it would be the Cobra class. The next escort ship gives us the turbulent class heavy frigate, and boy does it earn its name. Clocking in around two kilometers long, these bad boys fly ahead of the fleet in a vanguard and destroy enemy scout ships. 
Their tactics are very pirate-like, and due to their archaic design, a lot of people shit on them. However, they are pretty solid ships and have become incredibly rare, mostly because charging ahead of your fleet isn't the best way to keep your hull intact. Tempest frigates are another escort with the purpose of engaging enemies at close range. Despite void warfare often taking place over thousands of square kilometers, ships regularly get up close and personal for some classic broadside and boarding actions. This is where the Tempest shines. It has a triple armored prow and has swapped all long range guns for broadsides, as well as extensive infrastructure for the unleashing of boarding craft. Overall, a niche ship, but a valuable one. Having a few of these in your patrol would really shut down the more hyper aggressive enemy maneuvers. Probably the most famous of the escort ships are the Sword Frigates, a versatile, reliable ship that can do everything decently, but doesn't excel in anything other than durability. They are durable as fuck. Fleets love them due to how easy they are to repair and maintain, with even some Space Marine chapters using them. They can even be modified to become a different class. The best example is the Firestorm, a sword frigate with a big ass lance gun at the prow. Lance batteries are the weapons that can slice through hull plating like a katana through a nine year old. So having a few Firestorms in your patrol could very well spell doom for much larger battleships. Now for the final escort ship of the day. The largest, clocking in at 2.2 kilometers, is the Peculiar Falcon class. This ship was built on Forge World Vol after some cultists stole some ship plans. Then the Imperials tried to recreate what they thought was on the plans that were stolen, resulting in them creating the Falcon class. It's similar to the Sword Frigate in the way that it's a jack of all trades escort, however it is a little bit less durable, but is faster and more maneuverable. It has proven itself in void warfare numerous times over despite its pretty questionable origin. Now onto the chunkier boys, the Cruisers. Cruisers aren't particularly impressive and act more so as the bridge between escorts and true battleships. In saying that though, they can be pretty bloody deadly and carry a crew of over 100,000 people, especially when we get to the battle and grand cruiser subcategories. For the sake of this video not being three hours long, I'll discuss more so what each type of cruiser category is before using a few of the classes as examples, because there is legitimately over 20 different classes of cruisers, with the differences often being as simple as which way the toilet spins when you flush it. Light cruisers are often used for scouting, but not in in the same way that a Viper is used. They have the firepower and durability to trade with enemy vessels, so they make great patrol ships. For some reason, they also have extremely badass names, like the Dauntless class, which is a lightly armored but fast and deadly jack of all trades cruiser, or the Endeavor class, which is a larger but much slower cruiser. However, has significantly more firepower and acts more so as the heavy weapon ship of a patrol. Light cruisers are generally around the three to five kilometer long mark with around 50 to 100,000 crew members. There are others like the the Defender or Stygis classes, but they have fuck all lore and books don't generally follow the exploits of one of the smallest classes of warship that often. Then there are the Standard Cruisers. Whilst they are generally inferior to true battleships, they are often much faster and the first to react to enemy actions. They can prevent flanking, screen for slower battleships, or chase down fleeing ships. They are also a lot easier to build, with the technology required to build most cruisers not yet lost. Once again, they have super badass names, like the Dictator class, which are known for having a shitload of flight decks meaning they will often act as an orbitable aircraft carrier that doubles as a base of operation when invading a world, or the Tyrant class, which are effective in both long and short range engagements and come in at just over five kilometers long. The rest of the class of cruisers, like the Dominator or the Gothic, are more or less the same ship, however coming in with different weapon loadouts. For example, the Gothic uses lance weaponry whilst the Dominator has a fuck off broadside. Due to the smaller size of cruisers, they don't have the space or power to have lances, large flight decks, and hectic broadsides all in one. They got to pick one and excel at it. In saying that, the Lunar class tries its absolute best to do everything, having lances, torpedoes, weapon batteries and more. It's the ultimate generalist cruiser which is why it's the most common cruiser in the Imperial Navy. Battle cruisers are a bit spicier and are more intended for fleet on fleet action rather than just patrolling or scouting which is more common for the lighter cruisers. Once again, whoever named the cruisers deserves a raise since the Armageddon class battle cruiser is a thing. Cool fact about the Armageddon class, they were made exclusively from the corpses of dead Lunar class cruisers cruisers, hence they are basically just an upgraded version of it, taking all the generalist aspects and increasing the power. However, as it is a bit of a patchwork ship, it's not very comfortable, and because it's basically the same size as a Lunar class cruiser, yet has more power, it's very cramped and quite shitty to serve on. One of the best battle cruisers is the Overlord class, famous for its powerful long range weaponry that you'd usually only see on a true battleship. Although battle cruisers and normal cruisers are often a similar size, the battle cruisers are like an overclocked version, better armor, better weapons and more power without sacrificing too much mobility. They act as either a very powerful patrol and pirate hunter ship 
or as a pretty decent support ship in fleet on fleet combat. The Grand Cruisers are the biggest and baddest cruisers, clocking in around 7 kilometers with a cruise size of well over 100,000. However, the Grand Cruisers are kind of in an awkward spot for what their purpose should be, as most of them were built during the Great Crusade, when enemies didn't really have impressive fleets that could match the Imperium. However, now that they do, why use a Grand Cruiser when a genuine battleship is much better in terms of quality and cost effectiveness? As such, most Grand Cruisers have been assigned to patrol duties, which they are overqualified for. Most of them are being phased out, including the Vengeance class, which is incredibly overkill against pirates, and the Furious class, which is super powerful, but it's really hard to build. Overall, the Grand Cruisers are awesome, but quite obsolete. Oh baby, it's battleship time. Battleships have their own specifications and niches. However, pretty much all of them have torpedo pods, launch bays, lancers, weapons arrays, and more. All of them are versatile and can fulfill multiple roles, ranging from about eight to 10 kilometers long with a crew of a few hundred thousand. So they're really not that much bigger than a Grand Cruiser, but can hit many times harder. That's why I refer to Grand Cruisers as somewhat obsolete. Although each battleship class can fulfill multiple roles, they all have their niches. The Retribution class battleship is best at Leroy Jenkinson at enemy form formations, using its heavily armoured prow to deflect enemy fire while firing lances, torpedoes and pure hatred in a widespread in front of it, causing havoc and taking out enemy cruisers and escorts. Then when it gets close enough, it brings out the real fun, its heavy broadside. In a straight line, this ship is as fast as a cruiser, so you could consider it to be a shock ship. Not all battleships are made equal though. The ironically named Invincible class was a lightly armoured but incredibly fast battleship. Its firepower and speed made it great for taking out Dark Eldar Raiders and pirates. However, its armour was so weak that in one engagement, three of them were blown up in rapid succession. Thus, only ten were ever created. Most battleships look very similar because they were often created from the same template, but were modified to fit different roles. For example, the Apocalypse class battleship is built very similar to the Retribution class. However, it has different weapons. So instead of charging in, it sits back and tears enemy vessels apart with its advanced lance batteries as well as its Nova cannon. Thus, it synergizes extremely well with the Retribution class, as its more feisty cousin takes the brunt of the enemy's attention, allowing this 8km battleship to snipe enemy vessels. The greatest of the battleships were the Emperor class, designed over 10,000 years ago and still the gold standard. They often act as capital ships for Imperial Navy forces, but not many of them still exist. Sitting above Imperial battleships are the Space Marine battle barges, used almost exclusively by the Space Marine chapters and legions. Battle barges are absolute juggernauts, able to take on multiple enemy ships of a similar size and emerge victorious. No two are the same, with each legion or chapter modifying them to their needs. However, their speed, advanced armor, and deadly weaponry make them a one-ship fleet. The greatest of the battle barges is the Gloriana-class ship, clocking in at over 20 kilometers long and overpowered as fuck. Each Space Marine Legion was given one, or in the Dark Angel's case, three, Glorianas to act as their flagships for the Great Crusade. They were god-tier, all of them having the ability to conquer entire systems by themselves, as well as the ability to one-shot enemy battleships like they were nothing. They could field millions of crew members and were extremely resilient. When the Blood Angel's Gloriana, the Red Tear, crash landed on Cygnus Prime, it was able to be salvaged, launched into orbit, and then dragged across the galaxy for repairs. However, the Gloriana wasn't the largest class if you'd believe it. Prior to the Horus Heresy, Lorgar commissioned three Abyssal class super heavy battleships. Their exact size isn't known, but they make Glorianas look small and are more akin to a mobile star fortress than a standard ship, meaning they could easily be up to 50 kilometers long. One of the three was destroyed, but the other two are currently missing. They are powerful enough to match an entire fleet of battleships. Above the Abyssal class was the Emperor's own personal warships. One was called the Bucephalus, which was the name of Alexander the Great's horse, with the other being called the Imperator Somnium. They don't have a specific class as they were both entirely unique. However, the Imperator Somnium was the greater of the two and was even larger than the Abyssal class. It also had some fuck off planet destroying weapons that no other ship had the capacity to wield to the same degree, such as a Volkite Storm Accelerator and multiple Nova Cannons, whatever the fuck those are. It also didn't require a large crew as almost everything was automated due to it being a Dark Age of Technology ship. Tragically, it was destroyed during the Siege of Terror when it Leroy Jenkins charged by itself at the entire trade Armada in order to allow a Dark Angel force to get past the blockade to relight the Astronomicon and save Terra. It was able to take out five Traitor Space Marine battle barges, you know those fuck off one-man army ships, before dying. And finally, 
the greatest Imperial ship in the galaxy, a one-off with a class of its own, we have the Phalanx. The Phalanx is a mobile star fortress about the size of a small moon, with an estimated diameter of over a thousand kilometers, making it so much fucking bigger than every ship ever made. It was built during the Dark Age of Technology and was then found and modified by Rogal Dawn. However, after the heresy due to its size and the inability to properly repair it, it mostly acted as a stationary star fortress that was only occasionally flown out through the galaxy when shit got bad. However, in recent lore, the Adeptus Custodes fixed it and brought it back to full operation using some of their spicy toys. So now the Imperium has a mobile Death Star over 50 times bigger than a Gloriana class ship. Have fun with that one, you filthy fucking heretics. Your Arcs of Omen ain't gonna save ya. In terms of named classes of warship, there are probably like 100 more I haven't mentioned, but most of them literally have no lore and are just mentioned in passing in one of the 20 year old White Dwarf magazines. So if you really wanna know them all, then Google is your friend. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna support the channel, the Patreon is the place to be. Well, there's not only a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai, but also a bunch of live action nude cosplays. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more classy content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.